as we continue to look at the class of 2022 throughout all the Lafayette sports. I'm Adam Dobrowolski here with the men's soccer head coach, Dennis Bond. And coach, thank you very much for joining me. Obviously, an exciting time to be talking about 13 new recruits to this program. And obviously, uh, when you have 13 new recruits, there's a lot of different ways we can look at things. Uh, you have, in particular, uh, three goalkeeping recruits that have top billing, some guys who have worked as a striker, some guys who have worked at midfield, inside and outside. Your thoughts overall on just being able to get a deep class with varied abilities? Yeah, I mean, it was really important for us to, to bring in numbers, uh, create more competition on our roster. Uh, we looked at a lot of different players from all across the country, as you can see from our list, and uh, a lot of different positions. You know, so we wanted to create depth and, and competition across the board, and we think with the, uh, with the 13 additions that we were able to accomplish that. We'll start things off. We're just going to go through alphabetically, make it easy for everyone here, and no picking any favorites because our expectation is all 13 recruits uh, have severe and, and big impacts for this program. We'll start things off with Andrew Beasley an outside defender playing club ball for FC Florida. So he comes from the Sunshine State. Your thoughts overall on what he may bring to the table? Yeah, he's an athletic, tough uh, outside back. Um, played at, uh, plays high school at St. Thomas Aquinas, where we also have a freshman basketball player there now. So, you know, a really strong high school athletic department and a strong club team. And, and Andrew, I've gotten to know over the last couple of years at some different camps. Uh, and again, just a tough athletic, skilled player that we think can uh, really groom into a, a top outside back for us. Any of the recent outside backs that Lafayette fans can look at and may see as a comparison to Andrew? Um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess he reminds me of a little bit of a, a young, even though he's on, currently on the team still, but, you know, he's, he's similar to a Diego Gomera, Gomera uh, skilled but still strong and powerful, um, so athletic and, and tough. So, you know, I think he brings a, a lot of different positives to the, to the team. We'll continue right forward, Jackson Harris. He's their first of three goalkeepers we'll be talking about. He hails from Virginia, a top five club in Loudoun. Obviously, when you have three goalkeeping recruits, the first thing you think about is competition. So in terms of his competitive spirit, what gives him a really good chance to compete at this level? Well, for all three of them, you know, that was the, that was the main key recruiting point is that you're going to have a chance to come in and, and, and win the job since our, our starters were seniors last year. Um, but we're also bringing in other guys. And there were a lot of goalkeepers that we recruited that didn't want that competition. Uh, but, you know, Jack, along with the other two keepers, both or all three of them were, were excited about the opportunity, but also were ready to take on the, the competitive piece. And, and again, Jack's plays at a high level, played ODP, plays high club level. Um, you know, great young man, great student, and uh, no doubt has the ability to come in and, and try to win the job. We'll go next here with William Echevarria. Uh, a defender from Massachusetts, and he was actually named by uh, Bass Live, the Boys Soccer Player of the Year. The defender, what does he bring to the table? Will is uh, unbelievably athletic and unbelievably competitive. Um, he is, is just an amazing kid, uh, but like I said, just brings a toughness and a little bit of an old school kind of Lafayette defender mentality that, 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 that we're excited about. Um, he also has a really long throw, so with you know, losing Chris Moist to graduation, uh, he's go going to bring that as a, as a possible weapon for us. Uh, crazy as it may sound, even in the state tournament, uh, they put him in goal for penalty kicks, and they won two rounds of, in the state tournament with him in goal. Um, and that's just how athletic and competitive he is, is that you can pretty much put him anywhere, and he's going to probably create some success for you. Now, uh, with uh, Longmeadow up in Massachusetts, he scored nine goals as a senior. Uh, you talk about Chris, he scored a few goals last year, having those long throw abilities. Having that ability to get one of your defenders up to the front third, how important do you value that and how, he does, how does he fit right into that? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's probably in most of the games, you know, we have had success. With, you know, Chris probably was, was a part of that uh, the past couple years. And, and again, I think between Will with his long throw in and also his mentality on, on attacking set pieces on corner kicks and things like that, uh, that he could be a, a real weapon for us there as well. We're going to go back a little bit to another guy from FC Florida. Nate Haynes plays in the midfield. Obviously having that, that familiarity with another player coming in from, from club level now to NCAA level, how does that help things out that he's worked with a guy like Andrew Beasley? Yeah, I mean, they're both you know great additions. Uh, it's always nice for us to get down into Florida and recruit. We've had a lot of great players from there over the years. Uh, and Nate brings you know a great balance. He's a very technical, skilled midfielder, 
um, but he's also got a, a grittiness and, and, and a toughness to his game as well. That you know, when things need a, you know, when things get a little physical, he's he's not going to back down from anyone. And so we we love his edge, we love his grittiness, but we also love his skill level. Well, we've seen guys from Florida, Virginia, Massachusetts. Let's get a little bit more local. Get to our state neighbors, New Jersey, from Burlington County. Nick Hazel from Florence uh, Township Memorial High School. Dynamic player who's attacked very well, 81 goals his last two years. Now, obviously, he might not just be a striker. You might have different plans for him. Your thoughts overall, though, what he may bring just to the attacking half? Yeah, I mean, Nick can play almost anywhere. He literally can play all 10 field positions. He's uh, very athletic, very versatile. Uh, as you saw from his high school stats, he can score goals when, when put up top, but he also plays more of a deeper midfield role for his club team, uh, which were state champs. Um, so he's just a, a well-rounded, talented young man. And uh, again, I got, think a guy that we can bring in and, and almost put him in any spot, and he's gonna fill, fill, a, fill, a, fill a need for us. And he's actually the all-time leading scorer for Florence. And uh, he, you mentioned his club ball. Patriot FC will mention another recruit who plays club ball uh, for that team as well. Now we're going to continue along. Max Ippolito, he's from California. So, again, we're going looking at, uh, you know, a different area. Um, but across uh, the country, you've had successful recruits from California. He's from the San Diego area. What does he bring to the table? Uh, he brings a dynamic ability on the flank. He's more of a pure outside midfielder. He's unbelievably fit, um, willing to do the work as a wing back or as an outside midfielder, serves a good ball, uh, and has, a, has an ability to, again, just get up and down the flank uh, for 90 minutes that uh, most Young men probably his age don't have that, that endurance, um, and so we're excited to bring, again, that is another piece of our, of our class. Heading back to the Delmarva area in Bethesda, Matt Carroll, an outside midfielder. What, uh, what are his strengths and maybe a player that he might remind you of? I don't know, Matt's a lot like Nick in the fact that we really feel athletically he can play anywhere on the field. You know, he can play centrally, he can play out wide, he can play outside back and be an attacking outside back. Uh, I, I think with a little bit of coaching, he can, like I said, play almost any, any spot on the field for us. So we're excited about his skill set, his athleticism, his versatility. Uh, he's also playing the academy system now with Bethesda. So he's playing at a high level year round and uh, I think has a lot of potential. Now we're going to get to the second of our third uh, goalie recruits, Luke McDonald. Obviously, the, the McDonald last name for goal with, with Nate. Obviously, uh, has uh, you know a good ring to it. Two-time All-State player, below a point six goals allowed average according to Detroit Free Press. Uh, playing high school and then also a regional champ club team uh, with the Michigan Jaguars. So obviously, another strong goal recruit. Uh, what does he bring that might give him the edge, man? Not just physically, but mentally speaking. Yeah, I mean, he's all about the competition. He, he was very excited about the fact that, you know, he was coming in with a few other goalkeepers and, and he was excited about that challenge. So um, I think, like we talked about earlier with Jack, he's going to jump right in and from day one in preseason, he's going to be trying to show that he's the, the man and we're going to give all these guys a, a, the equal opportunity to, to accomplish the, the, the goal of winning the starting job. But he's a winner. You know, all these guys have won at the highest level of club soccer in the country and uh, Luke led his team to the regional championship last year um, and the semifinals and nationals. So he's he's gotten it done and with his production and results at the youth level where we you know we feel like he can possibly do that at the college level as well. Well, Michigan FC, they, they're a successful club team, Patriot FC. We've already mentioned one recruit uh, in Nick Hazel. Connor O'Donnell, another one. He's from Council Rock North. So, again, uh, a Keystone State kid, the first one we've mentioned, um, but someone who's right around that Bucks County area, Patriot FC, all suburban one player at midfield. What does he bring to the table? He brings a toughness, uh, you know, that I think we need in the midfield. Um, he, he, he plays more of a defensive center midfield role, can keep possession, uh, competes in the air, uh, but he's uh, he is a, a little bit of an old school guy as well because he's not, not scared to, to mix it up and bring a physicality that in the Patriot League I think is necessary uh, in the midfield if you're going to win some games and win some championships. We're going to get back to the defensive side for a second. Demetrius Shepard Lewis, a guy from Maryland. Uh, we've mentioned a few defensive players. When you see these, these defensive players all in the same recruiting class, do you think about how these guys might work together? And if so, how might uh, he work with uh, his fellow freshmen? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a guy who can play centrally or out wide. Um, you know, he can play 
um, I think in a three in a three center back system or in a, in a flat back four. So I think tactically he gives us a lot of versatility. Uh, but he's he, like I was speaking about a few players earlier. He's got a ton of potential. Uh, he just recently made the Region One ODP team. Played a little bit of a lower level um, of club soccer because he was a, a multi-sport athlete. Um, and now that he's just focusing on soccer, uh, you see his game uh, elevating. And, and I think again, his better days are, are ahead of him. And um, I think they could possibly be right away as a freshman for us. Any player that has recently played for a team that Demetrius might remind you of? Um, I mean, he's, he, he could be similar to a Julian Plummer type of guy. You know, he's, uh, he might be able to play a little bit more on the flank than Julian could as, as an outside back, but he's got a, a physical makeup, a, a strength, and a toughness like Julian did, and a calmness personality-wise too, so I think that would be probably a good comparison. But well, we're 10 through. We got three more here. We'll continue with Alexander Sutton, a player from uh, the New York City area, and he played for Manhattan SC, a top five uh, club team. What does he bring to the table? He's another goalie recruit among a top uh, club team. How does he fit into this competition? Well, like a lot of these guys, he's he's very athletic. You know, he uh, he's so athletic that he plays forward on his uh, on his high school team and was one of the leading scorers in all of New York City as a forward. Um, his club team, as you said, is top five in the country, one of the best clubs in the, in the nation, Manhattan Soccer Club. Uh, and then he also plays varsity basketball. So he's just a, a really well-rounded athlete, very competitive, um, very outgoing personality as far as his leadership skills in the, in, in the, and, and another guy that we're excited to have coming into our program. So we'll go from uh, New York City, we'll go then to North Jersey, from Ramapo, uh, Ramapo High School, Ramapo area. Sebastian Varela, one of the best midfielders in New Jersey. In fact, NorthJersey.com named him the player of the year two times and over his career. Uh, just a bit under 50 goals, two-time All-State player. Uh, what does Sebastian bring to the table that might be different from any of, of these other recruits? Yeah, I mean, he brings a creativity. You know, he's a, he's a technical, creative player. Uh, he's a great leader. Uh, again, in many people's opinions, was the best high school player in New Jersey. Not only just this past year, but even as a junior, um, you know, a, a top a top player in the state, and someone that I think can bring some some really strong attacking flair and creativity to to our program. And, and one thing I, I feel like we we should mention when we talk about recruits coming in from the high school level is how they might have evolved their own game. And he really did break out, as he mentioned, over the last two years. What might have you have noticed in terms of just his growth over those last two years that gives you the confidence he's going to adjust to the NCAA level well? I think the biggest thing is seeing him play at the club level. He plays for Cedar Stars Newark, which is predominantly all players from St. Benedict's High School. Uh, most of the games, he's the only non-St. Benedict's kid that starts, and he plays a predominant role um, on that team. And so seeing him play with other really high-level players and still have a huge impact uh, you know, gives me the belief that he can come here and do it at the college level as a freshman as well. Well, we've talked about 12 players who are coming from the high school level. we got to mention one transfer, and he is uh, – we're not saving best for last or anything like that, but he is last on our list because he's got uh, the, long, the uh, last uh, letter in terms of last name. Christian Williams, he comes from Florida Atlantic University. Uh, he worked as midfield. He was a co-captain uh, at FAU and also was an all-conference academic player. So, obviously, he fits right into the student-athlete mold uh, with the Patriot League and at Lafayette College. What does he bring to the table that will help just get him right into this system immediately? I mean, he's he's a, he's a starting Division One cent central defender. You know, he started this past year in a very strong conference. You know, playing against some of the best teams in the country. He was a captain as a sophomore, and uh, as you said, was was all conference with a 3.7 GPA. Uh, so he's from Saint, uh, uh, Chestnut Hill Academy, right outside Philadelphia. Uh, he wanted to get back closer to home. He's friendly with a couple of the guys on our current team, uh, and so it was just a, a perfect fit and a win-win. And uh, we're excited to have him on campus now training with the team uh, and we think his leadership skills his athleticism his strength and toughness uh, and experience is going to be huge for us as we get ready for next season and coach one final question to tie everything together we've seen uh, in these past year recruiting classes a guy like Evan Vare come in immediately start scoring goals last year you had a lot of freshmen get a lot of significant playing time when you see these recent classes now all starting to come together for this team that's going to be playing in fall 2018. What do you think is the biggest theme with these guys in terms of just their character as student athletes and how that might all tie together on the pitch? 
Yeah, I mean, we've always gotten great kids on the program. We've been young the last couple of years, and as a Sixers fan, I just kind of keep saying you got to trust the process a little bit. And we've had some down years, but we've won a lot of games uh, in the history of Lafayette soccer. We've won a lot of championships, and we're moving in the right direction. Um, but we've been patient with these younger guys, and, and, and now bringing in a class like we're speaking about and adding that to that group of guys uh, really gives me a lot of hope and positivity for, for 2018 and beyond. Obviously, playoffs are on the mind, Coach, not just for the Sixers, but for the Leopards exactly. coming out this fall. Exactly. Thank you very much, Coach. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. Again, that's Head Coach Dennis Bonham, Adam Dubrovalski. Exciting time coming up. That's the class of 2022 on the Lafayette Sports Network.